It's Thursday, May 7th, 2015. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 168. We're just going to do a quick episode today because we got a big tech snap coming up. In fact, speaking of tech snap, I think our first story might end up in the show today. Let's bring in the mumble room so we can chew through it. <laughs> Time appropriate greetings, mumble room. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Hey, guys. Now, I heard uh, we were talking a little bit about this in the pre-show, and I know some of you have already updated, but I wanted to get this in the show quick uh, because it's being actively exploited right now as we record this. It's a WordPress bl- bug. Uh, that's uh, It's a cross-site scripting vulnerability that allows attackers to take full control of unpatched WordPress sites. I guess it's in part of a WordPress. Uh, it's part of WordPress called 2015 that's installed by default. I'm not very familiar with this aspect of WordPress. I, this is news to me. But uh, it's out there right now. And who was it earlier that said they'd already patched this morning? Was that you, Ham? Yeah, I patched my uh, websites this morning to 4.2.2. So, okay. So, is that that's all that's really required is just go to the latest version of WordPress, basically. Well, yeah. And um, WordPress automatically <laughs> updated me to oh, uh, 4.2.2. Yeah, yeah so. right. It does that now. Yeah, great. Uh, also, this is just kind of a noteworthy. Microsoft has released PowerShell DSC for Linux. It's more Microsoft software for Linux today, everybody. Microsoft is announcing PowerShell desired state configuration. That's what DSC, not deep space or deep C. No, it's desired state. I know. But it's, they're making it available for Linux. It provides kind of like a common set of interfaces for administrators to pre-set up an environment uh, to sort of say, th- it, this, is a dev- this is a DevOps machine, or this is a web server, or whatever, and, and then orchestrate that. Um, you can use it to sort of manage the configuration of both Windows and Linux, Linux workloads, since they're making it available for Linux now. Uh, here's put another way by Benny Mouse on, su- uh, on uh, Slashdot. He says, DSC is in the same space as Chef or Puppet, or <laughs> Puppet and others. And unlike those, Microsoft attempts to build a platform infrastructure based on industry standards like OMI to allow DSC to configure and control both Windows, Linux, and other OSs, as well as network equipment like switches, etc., so what Microsoft is trying to do is sort of bridge the gap a little bit. Uh, this is kind of a neat. This is kind of a neat thing. Uh, I, I don't. I don't really have a lot of experience with this kind of stuff, but I. I can tell you that pa- uh, people th- that work in the Microsoft space, they're really happy that Microsoft is really truly investing in making PowerShell more and more usable. Any thoughts, guys? Anybody use PowerShell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Windows Power user, and I don't use PowerShell. Well, it's more of a system administration stuff. All right, so that's to server. Let's bring it back to the consumer side for a moment. Uh, this is coming from uh, Therat.com. Paul Therat confirms that Windows Media Center, with starting with Windows 10, is indeed dead. Dun, 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 yeah, they're killing it off. And uh, Microsoft says that, look, uh, we have the analytics. And the analytics say people don't use it that much. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I think a lot of people that uh, wanted to capture live TV would use Windows Media Center. Uh, but Microsoft says that the, lo- the number one scenario people use Windows Media Center was to play DVDs. So we're just going to provide another option for DVD playback in the future. So starting in Windows 10, no more. Windows Media Center. <coughs> Cody! Yesterday's episode, cough. Go listen to yesterday's episode. Mm. Now, moving right along because we are on a tight time scale uh, today because it's a big episode of Tech Snap. I wanted to talk about something I am looking forward to, something unique to the Tech Talk Today show is we get to re- we get to cover live events from time to time. And there's a big one coming up towards the end of the month. I think it's like May 27th or something like that. We'll zero in on that as it gets closer. But we are getting a sneak peek at what's coming up at Google I.O. in a little bit. Now, the one you've probably heard a little bit about is Android M, the next version of Android. They say it's going to be at the show. They have a sandbox session. These are little uh, break-off sessions at Google I.O. called Android for Work Update. And Android M is bringing the power of Android to all kinds of workplaces in the tease. A little bit of a oopsies, perhaps, there. Also, a few other things uh, we're going to see at Google I.O. A work for an update for Android work, uh, Google Cloud Messaging 3.0, the new push platform. Voice access is supposed to be a brand new big feature. Your app now available hands-free, full control. In this talk, we'll introduce voice access, a service that gives anyone access to their Android device through voice alone. No more touch. Hmm. Wonder how well that'll work. Real-time satellite imaging of Earth. Some people suspect because Google bought satellite imaging company Skybox last year for $500 million uh, that they may be showing Google Earth in real time. Why? Because there's a session called The Earth in Real Time, a look under the hood at Skybox to find out what we're building for your business and get a preview of the new breed of data set. Wow. Real time. 
Uh, also, crazy, crazy things, an advanced new wearable called ATAP. We don't know what it is, but it's from a division inside Google that's modeled after DARPA. And they say they're going to announce and show off a new wearable. And there's Polymer. Polymer is Google's new UI toolkit for making websites with an app feel. And they're going to have a demo of that at Google I.O. So I think it's going to be a huge show. I think it starts like May 27th or 28th. I think, I think people are going to show up there the 27th. So we'll probably get some news then. That'll be a Wednesday. And then Thursday the 28th, I believe, is the first kickoff. And we'll do live coverage of that. Should be huge. So that's Google I.O. coming up very soon. Guys, what do you think, Android M? Anybody have like a big wish feature off the top of their head real quick? What would you love to see in the next version of Android? Put the notification swipe back where it was. <laughs> yeah, I would. I uh, I am. I I would love to see some serious notification wrangling. I, that is something that drives me crazy. Now that's all. They're also going to my watch too. Uh, the priority stuff has helped, but I I would love to see some improvements there. That's a good one. Um, any others? Easy synchronization of notifications with uh, Chrome OS. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. sure. Instead of relying on Google Now. Uh, fix SD card access that was broken in KitKat, uh, SD card. Yeah. I, I extend, extended force support on SDs would be nice. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to do something around convergence since Microsoft's been talking about that. And le- of course it was a huge part of iOS eight was continuity, which is not really convergence, but it's handoff between devices, big and small. And Google hasn't made a lot of noise, and they almost didn't have to because inherently Chrome syncs between your systems really well. Google Docs syncs, obviously, between your systems. So they haven't had to work too hard in this area. But I wouldn't be surprised if they laid out something that was their vision of take an Android device, set it down, and now it becomes a computer. Uh, Plus, you know we're going to have to probably hear something about their new Google Wireless service, the Google Fi, right, or whatever it's called. And maybe, maybe an update to the Nexus line since the Nexus isn't selling very well. Maybe we'll see something there as well. I would like some to um, news on phone blocks as well, whatever the hell they oh, call it. Oh gosh, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Well, if you're out there scouring the web and you see, you see something interesting pertaining to our interests, as it were, go over to techtalktoday.reddit.com and submit it. We'd love to see that. Also, you can go to techtalktoday.reddit.com to submit a story that you just think we should cover in general. Uh, feedback. I don't check email too often because <laughs> it's a monster. It is a monster. But TechTalkToday.reddit.com. I check every single day. Now, uh, I'm going to take tomorrow off from uh, doing a regular show so that way I can work on some behind-the-scenes stuff for patrons. So there will be some content, but not on the regular feeds. I don't know. I don't have a complete description because it depends on how far I get. So uh, no show tomorrow morning. Sorry about that. But I'm going to sleep in a little bit, so I am still a little ba- bouncing back a little bit. And I, I decided after this morning, after having some technical difficulties, that, yeah, I do still need some downtime. So what I'll do instead is sleep in a little bit and record something for the patrons and hopefully get that out tomorrow. Uh, also, if uh, you haven't yet, there is an exclusive episode that was posted last week for the patrons over at patreon.com slash today. And you can go there and sign up. And we do really appreciate the support. 485 of you are supporting the Jupiter Broadcasting Show. All of the shows on the network, the infrastructure, the back end stuff, expenses, closing the gap, predictability, budgeting, all those things that I can say as fast as I possibly can because you guys know it's true. I love you. Really, it makes a huge difference. And it helps us grow without having to go out to more sponsors. Patreon.com slash today. Thanks, everybody. I really do appreciate it. Now, uh, I'd also, I mentioned that subreddit, techtalktoday.reddit.com. I'd love to get some Kickstarters in there. We haven't gotten one for like a week. And uh, any end of show video clips that are just like epic that you're like, how come Chris has never played this one? Would love to see that. Spazzy. Do you want a Kickstarter? Well, I mean, not right now, but maybe for next yeah, week. because yeah. I've got one. Really? What is it? It's, got a, it's a good one, too. Oh, right, tell me. It's called Chip. It's a $9 system on a chip. Well, there you go. There's, there's our quick Kickstarter chip. A nine dollar system on a chip, and Spazzy C says the Star Trek games are on GOG, so I got to check that out too. I got a lot to do after the show. Chip and Star Trek games on GOG, blowing my mind. The world's first nine dollar computer chip. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Dreamy. All right, well, so uh, I'll tell you now. You could spend nine dollars on a chip computer, or if you really know what you, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If you really want to spend your money wisely, you could spend your money on a computer that comes with a guy who could walk through walls and say stuff that doesn't make any sense at all, but sounds amazing. And I'm telling you, he's going to do it with an Australian accent. Now tell me, how much would you pay for that computer? Look at the computing power. But where is it when you need it? Right here, on the line with you. Toshiba Computers. 
financial control, greater connectivity, faster learning, better management. Toshiba, more computing tools to work on the line, wherever you are. The power center of business. Line one up for yourself.